Hi, my name is Kai Chiao, a PhD student studying at Auckland University. This is my lab, the industrial robotics lab, and those are my toys, the sensors and robots. In this video, I'd like to introduce you to the world of sensing. Let me ask a question first. How does a human being understand the surrounding environment? And how many biological sensors we have? Right, we have five different types of sensors. They are sight, smell, taste, and touch. Based on those five different sensors information, we can see the beautiful blue sky. And if you live in Michigan, you can see the colorful leaves in autumn. Also, we can avoid obstacles while running and can tell the difference when we're touching various materials. So, same question for the robot. How does the robot understand the surrounding environment? Right, the sensors. We created different types of sensors for robots. We help robots see the world. We created cameras, lidars, and radars. The cameras, just like human being eyes, can help robots see the world. And the radars and the lidars are kind of uh, touching sensors, which can help robot measuring the distance between robot and the obstacle or the robots between the target. So let's dive into sensors and check out how does it works. Cameras are just like human eyes and can provide us images. Cameras have various size and resolution for different purposes. Here I have a different size of camera. They all belong to single lens camera. A website camera which we can chat in online with our friend and family. And this uh, small size Raspberry Pi we can easily mount on some robot. This robot has a Raspberry Pi on it and also have a NVIDIA GPU board. This robot can avoid and tracking obstacles using machine learning and deep learning methods only based on vision information. Basically, we take hundreds of photos and then training our neural network to recognize obstacles. This is a high-resolution industry IDS camera. The IDS is stands for Image Developing System. So inside the camera, there is an advanced chip for developers, which means you can program in the camera to do some special task. Also, I have a two 360 degree camera. Each one has a two lens on it, and each lens has 180 degree of view. They're using software to combine two cameras together and generate a full 360 degree of view. They are using for security cameras, virtual reality development, also for self-driving technique. Cameras are high-resolution sensors. They can provide so many details of the environment. Nowadays, neural networks are a powerful tool for understanding cameras and making sense of what is in the image and what is going on in the environment. Also, cameras are so cheap, the price for the webcam and Raspberry Pi is only 20 bucks. However, Cameras can have limitations. They cannot provide useful information when the lighting environment is too bright and too dark. Also, in some special weather like rain and snow, we cannot trust the camera. Some self-driving vehicles can only use camera for navigation and obstacle detection. I know it can work, but I don't trust them because cameras cannot provide accurate distance information. That's why I want to introduce the ranging sensor, LiDAR and radar. 
There are several things to tell if a LiDAR is good or not. The max measure distance, scan rate, and resolution. This Turibot LiDAR is designed for student use. $200, it has 360 degree of view, distance range 200 meters, scan rate is 300 RPM, rotation per minute, and scan resolution is 1 degree. The 1 degree means if something is between the 1 degree and the LiDAR will not detect them. You see, everything is not perfect, but this LiDAR is good enough for student use. When not using this one, mapping the floor, the result is pretty good. Same as total about LiDAR, this Hukuyu is also a 2D LiDAR, only one laser beam. But this is an industrial level LiDAR, around $5,000. It has 270 degree of view. We can see from the back, there's no laser beam come out from here. So for this LiDAR, only focus on the left, front, and right. And the detection range is from 0 0.1 to 30 meters. I have to mention that for the LiDAR sensor, we cannot detect something very close to the sensor. They have a limitation for the detection. The scan rate is 2400 RPM, which is 7 times faster than Turbot LiDAR. The resolution is 0 0.25 degree, which is 4 times smaller than Turbot LiDAR. The speed of spanning is very important because scan rate means how quick we update our data for the environment. In the IGVC self-driving competition, we put this 2D LiDAR in front of our self-driving vehicle for obstacle detection. This is valid than 3D LiDARs. It has 16 channels. In the center, it will generate 16 laser beams within 30 degrees. Also generate 300,000 points per second. It has a 360 degree of view and 100 meter distance range. The price used to be 20,000, but now only half of the price. Valid and LiDAR also have 64 channels and 128 channels. This is also LiDAR. It has 32 channels. Detection range is 120 meters. 32 laser beams distribute in 45 degree. Vertical resolution is 0 0.35. Price around 8,000. This also LiDAR has more channels, more points, and longer distance detection. Self-driving vehicles use 360-degree LiDAR for obstacle detection or 3D mapping. They put the LiDAR on the roof of the vehicle and then record the data. Then using 3D SLAM algorithm to generate a 3D map of the street or using the deep learning method and machine learning method for point cloud segmentation and classification. Sometimes, only based on the point cloud, we can let computer recognize it's a person or a vehicle. These two are new generation LiDAR, solid LiDAR. Instead of spanning the laser beam, the Septon LiDAR using vibration technology to get the point cloud data. Inside the sensor, they have 32 laser beam array. Each laser beam generates a small block of point cloud and 32 blocks can bite to a large map. Each one has a 60 degree of view. The distance range is 200 meters. Price is $8,000. This LiDAR has a long detect range. We can put them in front of the vehicle to detect the potential obstacle. If your robot and vehicle only focus on what's going on in the front, solid LiDAR is a good choice. You see, different LiDAR has different features. 
Some has a very good price, some has 360 degree of view, and some has a long detection range. They all are very good tools for measuring. LiDARs is a key point for self-driving. Maybe with the industrial level LiDAR price go down to hundreds bucks, the self-driving vehicle will be widely used. Radar stands for Radio Detection and Ranging. Radar was used in vehicles for many years, like adaptive control, collision warning and collision avoidance. With the development of technology, radar is getting improved and more powerful year by year. Other sensors like LiDAR measure velocity by calculating the difference between the two frames. But radio was used Doppler effect to measure the speed directly. Basically, it's because of the frequency of the radio wave will changing when an obstacle is moved away or towards you. Radar is less affected by weather like rain and fog. Also, it is a wild angle about 150 degrees and long detect distance. And there is a case about sensor fusion for LiDAR and radar. LiDAR can give us the distance from the obstacle, and the radar can give the, the speed. So combine these two data together, we can get the better result and get the accurate information. And there are some special cameras that also can measure distance. They call double lenses camera, or depth camera, or RGBD camera. RGB means three basic colors, are right, green, and blue. The D is stand for depth. As human beings, we all have two eyes. And actually, every animal, they have more than two eyes. Why? Because we have to be very sensitive to feeling the distance. We have to avoid the obstacle, avoid the dangers. If I cover one of my eye, and it's very difficult to tell my hand is close or far. Based on this idea, we made two lenses camera, Z. The Z camera has two lenses on it, left and right. So two camera can give us two slightly different images. And we can find the same point on the images. We call this K point. We can calculate the K point. Also, we can calculate the distance between two cameras. So, we can calculate the distance between the obstacle and the sensors. Of course, this calculation is very expensive. We have to use some high performance GPU to calculate if we want to do this in real time. I will show some results later in the end of my video. This sensor is called Kinect or Xbox 360. Maybe some of you use this Kinect play some video games before, but this one is very popular for developing indoor navigation robots. When you play video games, Kinect can track your body based on the depth information. The secret is here. Connect using IR technology. The IR is infrared. There are three cameras on the Connect. The middle one is the normal RGB camera, and the right one is infrared projector, and the left one is the infrared receiver, like LiDAR. Infrared shoot out and then reflected and then reflected by the obstacle and then received by the receiver. We know the speed of the infrared and also know the time of flight. It's easy to calculate the distance between the sensor and obstacle. Connect use only indoors or somewhere without the sunlight. In ROS, Connect also can provide us the point cloud data for the environment. Okay, now you know that that camera has two lenses and you know the Kinect has three lenses. 
This is called real sense camera. It has four lenses. So here we can see here is a RGB camera and the middle one is a infrared projector and the other two is a infrared receiver. Also, there's an IMU sensor is on board. IMU stands for Inertia Measurement Unit. It's used for detection of movement or rotation. For example, when you want to use this real sense camera for vision slam, that means you want to build a 3D map based on this camera. We can sensor fusion the two different data. We can fuse the IR image data with the IMU movement data to get better results. Also, because of the small size and the low cost, we can put the small sensor on any robot, like the turtle bot. We can put in front of the turtle bot. Also, we can put this vision-based robot. We also can put some flying robot. Of course, this camera can work outside. Well, uh, those are three different type of RGBD camera. I like them. They have a good price around $200 to $300 and they are very interesting to play with.